Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for the weekend. Yeah, this is your weekend edition. So this is going to be for Friday, January 18th through Sunday, January 20th. Now, this doesn't have to be for those days. These are just the messages that Spirit wants to bring through in this time. And I'm dating it dating it this way so that you know you have some sort of chronological order to say okay this happened here you know it ha you, chronologically speaking okay so it's not just one big hodgepodge of stuff um so this is for the weekend now we do have this super blood moon eclipse this weekend okay um betsy my dear dear betsy of fearless intuition she put me on to a video um, by the Leo King. Uh, <clears throat> she uh, shared his video with me for this week about, you know, what's, well, now this past week, basically, um, what's been going on in the transits and all that. Um, I, if you guys want to, I highly recommend you check it out. Um, it'll help you get a deeper understanding of what is going on surrounding, you know, this eclipse um and a good way to really like think about it and look at it and actually it, he really describes a lot of the shifts and the changes and this like in between worlds period that we've been in um over these last few weeks culminating in the full moon on sunday into monday night sunday night into monday um so i highly recommend that you guys check it out it's he's called the leo king if you're not if you're not familiar with him um, the Leo King. He's on YouTube. He's also on Facebook, um, but his videos are on YouTube. So it's for this week. Um, you know, this past week. I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember the actual date. Um, shoot. Hold on. Wait. I want to. I want to get that for you guys because if you're really interested in looking at it or watching it, um, I highly recommend you do so. I just. Ah, there it is. I just have to find my phone. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's a little early in the morning here. Um, but I'm going to get the name of that for you right now. But, yeah, it's been it's been a really interesting week. I'm not going to lie. So, other than that, um, a little bit of an announcement. Uh, there's a slight change in plans. I am going to be at Om Shanti Bookshop today. However, I'm not going to be there until 5 p.m. I'll be there from 5 to 9 this week. Um, so, okay, this, yeah. So this um, this video by the Leo King, it's Deep Astrology Weekly Horoscope, January 15th to the 21st, 2019, Lunar Eclipse, Leo, Jupiter, Venus, Trine, Mars. All that right there, if you want to check that out, okay? Um, yeah, so check that out. He, he really helped me understand what was going on. All right, guys. So I am going to be at Om Shanti tonight, but then I'm not going to I'm not going to be there until 5 p.m. Yeah, great. Let's get to it. Ooh. All right. Hi spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the weekend of Friday, January 18th through Sunday, January 20th. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, I'm just going to shuffle really quick and then we're going to get into it, yeah? Weekend edition. Friday, January 9th, uh, 18th, excuse me, January 18th to Sunday, January 20th. I already feel like I'm really just wanting to stay in and hibernate this weekend. We're supposed to have a snowstorm here. I don't know if it's going to be actually, well, how much of it's actually going to be snow, sleet, or rain, or freezing rain, or whatnot. But we already have some snow. It's like almost 6 30 in the morning right now and snow's falling a little bit so i'm already like ooh ooh snowed in weekend <laughs> i'm actually kind of excited about it but we'll see but really 
I highly recommend that you guys really watch that video. I mean, it is an hour and a half long, don't get me wrong, but um, it's really good at explaining things, you know, explaining the energies. He's really good at that. So um, especially with this full moon, it's a super moon and it's an eclipse, a, a full uh, a full lunar eclipse and it's a full it's a leo full moon so you have that on top of that so any of you leos out there might be really being affected by this but i, I mean i really i'm really just staying in this weekend because there's going to be a ton of madness around shit's going to get crazy shit's going to get weird and i'd like to stay away from it <laughs> all right last shuffle here and then we'll see what we've got for the weekend All right, guys. All right. For the, this weekend, the 18th to the 20th, what do you have for us, Spirit? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the weekend. January 18th to the 20th. Nothing. You have nothing for us, Spirit. I, I, I find that hard to believe. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. That's not, ah, there it is. All right. For the weekend, for the weekend, for the weekend, for the weekend. There we go. For the weekend, the 20th. Ooh, okay, so the first card to come out face up is the 10 of cups. <gasps> wow. Okay, here we go. Actually, wow, that's beautiful. Okay, underneath the deck, you have the Knight of Cups. Now, the Knight of Cups is an energy of, um, the Knight of Cups has actually been coming out a lot lately for a few of us. Um, the Knight of Cups can mean an offer of love coming in. It can. But really, the way I'm, I've been seeing the Knight of Cups lately is um, creative expression, moving forward with your thoughts and your goals, uh, moving forward with an open heart. Um, yeah, opening your heart more, uh, shock, heart chakra cleansing, okay? This is being more open to love, more, op uh, more accepting of love, willing to communicate about love, willing to share your feelings. This is not anything too, too serious. It's not the king or the queen, but it still has a good amount of merit here with the knight, okay? Now, we have the 10 of cups was the first card to fall out face up, which is beautiful, all right? So that's gonna be the center of our reading here. And we have death. Now, I the death card has never come out in this deck. Look at how beautiful that is, okay? Um, I mean, it's beautiful and it's a little scary at the same time, <laughs> you know, with the imagery here, but it's gorgeous. And it just feels very free and happy-go-lucky, although that moth in there is giving me a little bit of a Silence of the Lambs vibe. <laughs> anyway, we have the Eight of Pentacles and the Five of Wands. Eight of Pentacles, Five of Wands, and then we also have, woo the Tower, the Four of Swords, and the Nine of Pentacles. But the Nine of Pentacles is in reverse here. Oh, wow. Wow. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it like I see it and tell it how I feel it, you guys. This feels like preparation for a soulmate to come in. And the Knight of Pentacles did say that a little bit in the beginning, but that wasn't the biggest thing I was picking up with the Knight. The biggest thing I was picking up with Knight was just having an open and ready heart, um, being very much more, way more healed um, than you have been in the past. And a lot of this is going to have to do with this full moon transit that we have over the weekend. Because look at here, the Four of Swords. You see that full moon in behind that person. Now, this, granted, this is the Moon Child Tarot. So there is quite a bit of moon symbology here, like on this Ten of Cups here. Okay. But um, with the Four of Swords here, well, let me not go ahead. Let me not jump ahead of myself. But um, there's definitely, the full moon has a lot to do with what's going on 
in our lives right now, um, in our love lives and all that stuff. This is, and actually this is something that I've been channeling for like this, this week I'll say between here and Instagram. Um, and this is something that the Leo King pointed out. This post full moon, we're moving into a brand new paradigm, like a brand new, totally new thing. Um, and you're either on the boat or you're either on the train or you're not. And um, this is what's giving us, a lot of us, this in-between worlds type of feeling. Um, even Aluna Ash mentioned it in one of her recent energy updates. And I was kind of blown away when I heard her say that because it's like, dude, I've been saying that like all week. That's crazy. Um, but a lot's going to be changing after this full moon. And, and what I'm getting here is this is really just kind of preparation. I don't even know where to begin. To be honest, um, I'm going to start, I'll start here with death. So this death is, this is a transformation. We've all been going through some sort of transformation, but this is like, this is a major one. It's death that's leading you towards uh, a transformation that's leading you towards greater fulfillment, greater authenticity, greater happiness. 1111 on the counter. And um, this could also be finances, career. That's definitely a big part of it. If you've been if you've been working on manifesting that, that's definitely a big part of it, um, and and that could be what's going on here with the Knight of Cups. This is creative re expression as well as having an open heart. And it's open heart. It's it's creative expression through the effort through through the reality of having an open heart. Okay, now, so um, many of you, many of us, are manifesting, are working on manifesting not only love but financial abundance, um, a better job, a better job situation. And things have been a little bit stagnant recently, but it's all been a test because if you remember, the devil's been, come, been popping up left and right for quite a bit of us. And, it's, and actually, it's so crazy because the Leo King really does explain exactly what was going on with all this devil energy that was coming through because we're making this shift and darker en entities are trying to keep us from from making the shift basically and so they've been throwing all kinds of shit at us subconsciously subliminally in order to get us off the path but like i've been saying don't let the get the devil get you down i really recommend that you guys watch that video um i'm gonna put a link to it in the description box so that you guys you guys can get to it now now you have the tower you have death and you have the tower in the same reading. I mean, this is intense. This is intense, okay? The tower, but this is in the past. As for the majority of us, this is in the past. This is actually something that we've been working through, okay? For some time. Now, uh, five of wands and the four of swords. So there's a lot of conflict right now. The dust is still kind of settling from this tower moment. We're, ma we're actively making this transformation with Ten of Cups energy more in mind. So the dust is settling, all right? So that's why you're feeling a little chaotic. That's why you're feeling um, maybe restless. Um, you might be arguing with yourself. You might be arguing with others. It's just, you know, there's a differing of opinion. You don't know which end is up right now, potentially. And what you're needing to do, that's all with the five of wands. So what you're needing to do is just rest. I highly recommend that people just stay in this weekend and rest and meditate and maybe, you know, do a bit of a full moon ritual. Write down what it is that you're trying to release um, and burn it. I don't know, do something, um, whatever would resonate with you. But I do recommend, I highly recommend that people stay in this weekend and allow these energies to transit, allow these energies to um, to make their moves so that we can get through this portal and, and get going with our lives, right? And then the nine of, the nine of pentacles is underneath the deck. So I'm under, excuse me, is underneath, is on the bottom of the reading here. What I'm getting with this is a somewhat twofold. For for some of us, this is, um, well, mm. no longer being single, potentially, um, but for others of us, this is waiting for abundance, waiting for, like, abundance is coming through, um, independence is coming through, a lot of it is going to be coming through starting 
post full moon, okay? Because we're making a major paradigm shift. For others of us, this is the actual Knight of Cups coming forward and making an offer to some of us. Again, this is post full moon. Exactly when this is gonna happen post full moon, I don't know. Again, the dust is going to need to, to settle for some more time, you know? this full These the full moon energies are gonna be really intense and people may be getting into fights, you know, you never, I mean, it is a full moon, so that, and that stuff can kind of happen. So you're going to just have to go with the flow. I don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but even, even um, Missy has been channeling that it's going to happen pretty soon. And at some point, at one point, I was like, yeah, this, whatever is coming through post full moon, it's going to come through pretty quickly once we get this through this full moon, okay? But, but again, release all kinds, release all the expectation. Don't worry about when, how, why, where it's going to come from. Just be in alignment with it. If it's what you want, recognize that and maintain your alignment with it and allow the universe to do the rest of the work, okay? Abundance is coming through. Abundance is on the way. And that's what the, well, the abundance is already here with the nine of pentacles. But what we're moving into, we're shifting into an energetic reality, an energetic space, an energetic paradigm in which this abundance is going to be flowing more towards you. It's not, um, there won't be so many blockages. And this is why uh, darker forces have been working to keep us from making this shift, to keep us off the path, which is why you cannot let the devil get you down. This is ultimately big, a pretty big test recently of faith, okay? And like I've been saying, if you've been following your own guidance, if you've been following the nudgings from your higher self, from the universe, if you've been following the synchronicities, if you've been making taking the steps that you've been guided to take, then all you need to do is just keep moving because you're in alignment, okay? If you're making decisions from egoic points of view, egoic standpoints, that's probably not going to work so much in your favor. If you're making your point, if you're making your decisions from a higher wisdom point of view, from a higher guidance point of view, your higher self, your angels, your guides, spirit, whatever, whatever, God, source, creator, however you identify with it, then you're on the right track and you just need to keep moving forward, okay? All right, let's clarify. I really am seeing this Knight of Cups energy as much more of an open heart than, um, you know, a love offer coming in. But it's that open heart that allows the love offer to come in at some point, okay? All right. So we're going to start with Death, the Ten of Cups, and the Eight of Pentacles. Please clarify, Spirit, Death, Ten of Cups, Eight of Pentacles. Ooh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. All right, underneath the deck, wow, is the Nine of Pentacles. So like I said, um, abundance is coming through. We're making a transition into a much more autonomous lifestyle, a much more um, independent lifestyle. We've got the Queen of Pentacles. We have the Ace of Swords, which has come out in reverse. We have the Star. We have the Knight of Swords. And we have the Ace of Wands that came out in reverse as well. Wow. All right, guys, this is not a bad thing. Um, so don't think of it that way. Okay, so what I'm seeing so far, we're going to start with the Ace of Swords and the Ace of Wands. These are, this is the aha moment. This is truth. This is clarity. This is inspiration. Okay. But they are reversed right now. That's not a bad thing. What that's saying is that uh, these things, these, these, these are waiting in the wings. All right. These are just across the threshold. So... You might be feeling a little jaded. You might not feel, be feeling too inspired right now, and that's okay. Um, you, might, you might not be seeing things so clearly right now, which makes perfect sense because the dust is still, still settling from this tower moment and is going to be settling from the full moon for a while. But what I'm, say, what I'm seeing with this is that once we cross through to the full moon, 
um, these this real this ace of wands this ace of swords will be available to you it won't really be blocked it's just it's just a little bit of a, a blockage a hold up right now at the moment okay because there's still some healing that's happening between the star and the three of swords the three of swords energy um, it doesn't have to be deception it doesn't have to be backstabbing whatnot Ooh. excuse me at its you know, at its core, the Three of Swords is just heartbreak, whatever that means for you, okay? And so there's a lot of healing surrounding this heartbreak. I mean, you do have death, which is this transformation here. That's what we're clarifying, and that's what you've been working towards. Now, we finally have the Knight of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles. So I see this as an energy of someone coming forward, wanting to communicate to the Queen of Pentacles. That could be you as the Queen of Pentacles, or you could be the person wanting to send some sort of message, making some sort of offering to the Queen of Pentacles. I'm seeing an energy. It's an energy of like the knight in shining armor kind of coming rushing in. Um, but I'm seeing a little bit of um, a lack of, a, a small amount of a lack of maturity here, only because it's the knight, not the king. Um, and I, but with that said, I feel like if someone should, should communication come in, I do feel like it would be well intended. It's just, it just might be a little overzealous, especially from the point of view of the queen of pentacles, who's been through some shit and is sitting there, sitting here, there on her throne, like just minding her own business. And then this young, albeit attractive young individual comes through and is like, saying all this stuff and it's like whoa buddy i need you to slow down a little bit like you're cute thank you i appreciate the enthusiasm but i'm gonna need you to slow up a little bit <laughs> you know um but they mean well um communication now also the knight of swords with this full moon situation going on the knight of swords can be arguments fights so the Knight of Swords does speak to needing to pick your battles wisely and all that good stuff. Just be careful. Be careful how you communicate this weekend, all right? Because people are feeling a bit volatile anyway with death. I mean, this is clarifying death. So we're all going through this major transformation. But with that in mind, just be careful. <laughs> okay. Now let's clarify the Five of Wands, the Tower, and the Four of Swords. Please, Spirit. The Hermit. Yep. Nine of Wands. Okay. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Ooh. Oh. There's that Knight of Pentacles. Underneath the deck, you have the Page of Cups. Okay. Okay. So this is the dreamer. This is reconcil reconciliatory energy. Um, apologies, potentially, you know, the page of cups is a mess. The pages are a messenger. So are the knights, but the knights are a little different in that sense. Wow, we have the chariot. We have, oof, there's the devil and the nine of swords. Okay, so nine of wands, nine of swords, the devil, chariot, hermit, and the knight of pentacles. And actually, it's so funny because the chariot and the Knight of Pentacles energy is a little bit of an oxymoron because it, it well, depends on how you look at it, Spirit is saying to me, because you can either look at the Knight, uh, I'm sorry, the Chariot as moving forward very, very quickly. Um, and you're moving forward quickly when it comes to this card because you know exactly where you're going. You're balanced. You are, you've got conviction. You've got passion. You're using your emotions to, to, to fuel your, your, your travel, your movement. I heard your marksmanship. That's that's interesting because, um, you know, the Eight of Wands can be a fast-moving card too, and that's the card of the Archer. So that's an interesting way the Spirit put those two together. That's interesting. And you could say the Chariot is very much like an Eight of Wands energy because you know exactly where you want to go and you're going there. Like, nothing's going to stop you. It's much like an arrow. Like, not much can stop that arrow once it's been shot, right? So, um, you also have, but with the, with the Knight of Pentacles here, it can seem like a bit of an oxymoron because the Knight of Pentacles is the slowest moving knight in the deck. Um, but what this is talking about here is conviction between the chariot and the Knight of Pentacles. It's talking about knowing 
exactly where you're going or at least having a better much clearer idea of it and that's because of the work that you've done the inner work that you've done to, sh to find your inner light here with the hermit okay um, it's almost as if some of us like we're emerging from this hermit mode now, or at least we're beginning to, we're starting to wake up from the slumber. Um, it doesn't mean we're moving too quickly because I think the, the deeper understanding here is that with the hermit, we understand how we just need to take our time. Um, we just need to go with the flow. We need to detach from um, timing and specific people in this, that, and the, and the other. Um, and we understand that through this inner work because we understand that we are um, multidimensional beings. We're much more than just these, as some people say, meat suits, <laughs> you know, um, and time and space, time is an illusion. Okay, so we are moving. We have the passion and the desire to move, but we're not trying to move too quickly because we want, we want to make sure everything is done right. We want the foundation built correctly so that we don't have to go back and change anything. We want to learn these lessons now so that we can be clear of them moving forward so we can expand and experience the new in our lives, okay? Now, with all of that said, we have... <laughs> We have the Nine of Wands, the Nine of Swords, and the Devil. I mean, we're feeling pretty battered and bruised right now, okay? So this is all clarifying the Five of Wands, the Tower, and the Four of Swords. And like I was saying, the Tower energy is from the past, okay? This is a Tower energy situation that we've been through that happened in the past that we're still trying to pick up the pieces from, still trying to hear from, heal from, uh, still trying to allow the dust to settle from, okay? Um, nine of wands and nine of swords. First of all, they're two nines, all right? So these are numbers of endings here, big old endings. And you can call, in some ways, you can call the death transition that we're going through right now, you could call that the completion, okay? But we're almost there. Okay, we're moving towards completion, all right? We're, trans we're transiting, death is happening, which is beginning the completion process, right? We're battered and we're bruised, but we're persevering here, even though we've got this anxiety in the back of our heads. But why do we have this anxiety in the back of our heads? The devil. The devil is trying to stop us. Darkness, dark entities, whatever, however you want to describe them. They're trying to fill our minds with doubt, fear, shame, disbelief, trying to get us off our path, trying to tell, say, look, you're not gonna be able to do this, this is crazy, get a real job, fuck you, actually. I, no, who are you? Get out of my face. <laughs> that kind of energy. Um, and with the Page of Cups, what I'm hearing here is the dreamer, all right? This could be reconciliatory energy, but this could be um, atonement, like taking some time to like really meditate and think about what's gone, gone on and, you know, forgive, um, forgive yourself, forgive others, you know, send out your apologies to, into the ether, you know, that kind of thing. But also this is the dreaming of the new cycle. This is dreaming of the possibilities, right? Okay. I do want to clarify this Nine of Pentacles in reverse here. Let's see what we've got. Please, Spirit. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. Okay. Cool. Ah. Well, first of all, we have Justice, which is underneath the deck. Okay? This is a good thing. All right? Wow. You have the High Priestess. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. So I told you, okay, some of you, this Nine of Pentacles here, we have the Knight of Cups again. So look, the Knight of Cups is on the top and on the bottom of the reading. That's kind of freaking awesome, you guys. But for some of you, this Nine of Pentacles in reverse is talking about leaving singlehood, okay? Now, I'm not saying the full moon's gonna hit and the next day you're gonna have, someone's gonna come approach you, you're gonna fall madly in love and you're gonna get married within the week. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> what I am saying is that there is potential for you to cross paths with someone that could lead to a relationship down the road. And it doesn't have to be that far down the road, but you know what, who cares? Everybody's, t 
forget time. Screw time, okay? Just get that out of your head. <laughs> okay, we have the Seven of Pentacles. And this is definitely an energy of reaping what you've sown. So if you've been doing this work here with this Eight of Pentacles, if you've been doing this work, then you're going to reap the rewards. Seven of Pentacles, Knight of Cups. Now, this could also just be open creative expression, all right? If you've been feeling a little a little bit stagnant um, or creatively blocked, this definitely can mean the inner work that you do now during this period will help you open up those creative, creative centers even more. And then we have the High Priestess. So this is a bit of the unknown. Um, this is going with the flow of the universe and trusting the unknown, trusting the magic of the universe trusting your intuition this is another message of saying if you've been following the guidance from your higher self even though you don't know exactly where it's going to lead you you don't know exactly where you're going to end up if you've been following that guidance you are going to reap the benefits of it okay you have sown beneficial seeds and you're going to reap a beneficial harvest from it if you haven't been following the guidance from the universe and your higher self well i don't know what you're going to get only the high priestess knows that, and she's not. A, she's not finna tell you. <laughs> oh goodness gracious, I'm being silly. Okay, so I want to move into the oracle section now, but I'm not sure what I want to do for this. Unicorn. Okay. And then, and then we'll close with the uh, crystal mandala. Sweet. So, oracle guidance, please, spirit, for this weekend. Whoops. Let's try that one more time. And one last for good measure. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Here we go, guys. Best message, please, spirit, for the weekend. January 18th to the 20th. Best message, please, spirit. And unicorns. And unicorns. A balance. Okay. Ooh intention miracles imagination good lord underneath the deck is magic Woo chow magic make a wish believe in miracles magic surrounds you oh my god you have intention here um intention be clear and decisive focus on what you really want be bold with your requests to the universe stop playing it safe guys Stop playing it safe, point blank. Dream big, wish big. If you want it, ask for it. You're worthy of having it. Set your intentions through this full moon. Imagination, envision a new reality. Give yourself permission to dream. The dreamer, the page of cups came out, right? Believe in unlimited possibilities. Stop dreaming small, period, point blank. Go big or go home. <laughs> well, it's not really like that, spirit says, but. <laughs> That's a human concept, Eric. Okay, I get it. But still, if you want something, don't be afraid to ask for it. Nothing is too small for the universe. Nothing is ever... Think about it. Think about how vast the universe is, guys. Nothing is too small for the universe, okay? You have balance. Take time to relax. Indulge a little more or a little less. Set boundaries with your work. So this is that energy that I was pulling, picking up on saying, if you can stay in this weekend, do it. Just rest. Rest, recuperate, recalibrate, do a bit of a full moon ritual if you like, do a bit of a ceremony to set in your set your intentions through this full moon. Um, maybe, you know, do some self-care, take a bath, have a nice, you know, warm, relaxing bath, cleansing, soothing bath to help you cleanse away, um, to help you heal, to help you move through this transition, okay? And finally, you have miracles. This is so beautiful. Have faith that your miracle is on, the way, on its way. Your prayers have been answered. Surrender the how. Expectation, release it. Now, um, someone did say 
uh, to explain this a good way, um, oh, I think it was Emily of um, Indigo Moon Heal Indigo Moon's Healing. She was talking about maybe was it em I think it was Emily. You're never not going to have desire. Okay, we came here with a desire to accomplish something. So you're always going to have desire. Um, but expect the expectation of how that desire is fulfilled by the universe is what needs to be let go of. Because that's where you really allow the magic, the magic of the universe to flow. I mean, this is going to be a really magical weekend. It already is. It feels that way. Okay. All right. So to close the reading, I want to get one card from the Crystal Mandala deck here. Best message, please, Spirit, for the weekend. What you got for us, Spirit? What you got for us? January 18th to the 20th. Thank you so much, Spirit. January 18th to the 20th. There it is. Wow. Okay, we've got two of them. Mm, underneath the deck is Passion of the Lion Heart, which is a beautiful, beautiful card. That's about moving forward, um, being passionate, not being afraid to speak your mind, speak your truth, to go after what it is you want. Um, and actually, this full moon is in Leo here. And Leo is the archetype of the lion. And so having passion of the lion heart is, on the bottom of the deck here is pretty perfect. I might read that. I might not. I'm not sure. But we have, wow, card number 25, Ascended Master Yogananda and Rhoda Knight, Empowered Service. And we also have card number 41, Goddess Ishtar and Astrophilite, Daring Rebirth. I mean, that's, psh, fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, man. This is intense, you guys. Okay, I'm going to start with card number 25. Ooh, wow, I just opened right to it. Oh, that is so cool. I love it when that happens. All right, here we go. Empowered Service. We bring you the blessing of empowered service. It is your time to assume your place in the world at the table of the masters who serve the loving hand of the divine. You have been asking for your purpose to be more clearly unveiled and manifested in the world. You have endured lessons of patience. You have learned that spiritual progress can be made even without results being imminently, oh, I'm sorry, immediately obvious. You have learned trust and a willingness to surrender your personal desires into a larger plan we know that of which you are capable and we now invite you to step into the next level of empowered service available to your soul in service to the greater plan of divine love unfolding well gee i don't think that could be any more perfect wow okay next we're going to go to card 41 daring rebirth and then I do want to read a little bit of Passion of the Lionheart, especially since, you know, this full moon is in Leo here. Okay. Car uh, card number 41, Goddess Ishtar and Astrophilite, Daring Rebirth. We bring you the empowerment of Daring Rebirth. The bold spirit in you claims the divine, I'm sorry, claims the divine defiance of the phoenix. It refuses defeat at every turn. No matter who or what may seek to overpower your spirit, your peace, your loving heart, and your wild optimism, you shall triumph with a divine and daring rebirth. Do not limit yourself with expectations, whether from another or your own mind. There is so much possible for you, a radically different and new you to become. Believe, and so shall it be. And just what, just who are those energies, or just what are those energies? that are trying to tear you down, but none other, none other than the good old devil here that's been coming out all week. Do not let that devil get you down. If you haven't watched that morning coffee reading from yesterday entitled, Don't Let the Devil Get You Down, watch it, okay? Watch that shit. Finally, we have card number 39, Goddess Sekhmet and Fire Agate. 
Passion of the Lion Heart. We bring you the empowerment of Passion of the Lion Heart. Through passion, you will dedicate yourself with an intensity and discipline that may surprise you. Passion is love activated. It is energy that moves you from within and empowers you to act in the world in ways you would not otherwise dare to even consider. Passion gives you strength, plugs you into the eternal energy of sacred fire, and generates the ability to accomplish tasks you once may not have believed possible. With great passion, there can be great pain. The lion heart um, that the, I'm sorry, the heart that loves wild and open is also the heart that can feel disappointment and doubt most keenly. The empowerment of the lion heart strengthens your heart to recover from any pain through the power of courage, commitment, and bold, loving devotion to what matters most to you. That's quite beautiful, guys. So I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. I am going to be at Om Shanti Bookshop today, but I'm actually not going to be there until 5 p.m. So come by tonight and see me if you are in the area and you have the time. Um, I will be doing a Twin Flame reading on Sunday. Um, I am going to be going live, but it's going to be my last twin live Twin Flame reading up until like probably mid-March, and I'll explain on Sunday. But that's going to be this Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, last live. After that, we're going back to recorded re readings for a while. Um, yeah, go ahead. And if you haven't done so already, follow me on Instagram at divine, Conver divine underscore conversations. I am doing an Instagram sale. Um, 20% off a general freestyle reading for all of my Instagram followers. I'm going to be doing that for the month of January, and then I'm going to be doing a different sale for the month of February. Uh, for Valentine's Day, a Valentine's Day sale. Haven't quite worked out the details of that just yet, but as soon as I have that worked out, I will let you know. Okay, <laughs> I love you guys. Have a great weekend. And please, if you can, just stay in and hibernate and protect your energy um, and do what you can to really take advantage of this massive shift in energy. All right, guys, I love you. Have a great weekend, and I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah? Take care. Bye.